Have you ever wanted to run Radiant, Devour, Void Overshield, Amplified, and Unraveling Rounds all on one class? I'm going to show you how. Hey guys, so I'm back with another underrated and slept on weapon -y in Destiny 2. And this time, as you guys requested in my last video, I'll be touching on all classes in this build slash weapon review. So today we're going to be talking about the Buried Bloodline. This is the exotic from the recently released Warlord's Ruin dungeon. You can obtain this exotic from the final boss in Warlord's Ruin, but I recommend finishing some of the triumphs that increase your drop chance. If you wanted to try to solo Warlord's Ruin, Check out my Igneous Hammer build that I made a video on as it carried me to my solo completion and it'll greatly increase your chance to get it. The Buried Bloodline comes with the exotic perk called Hungering Coral, which grants Devour on multi-kills. Four red bars, or one yellow bar to be exact. The Catalyst, Split Vine Lineage, states, While Devour is active, shots from the Buried Bloodline weaken targets on hit. And now this is where the build crafting is going to start to begin. So we're going to take Repulsor Brace, which states defeating a Void debuffed target grants an overshield. So I think you guys can start to see where I'm going with this. Next, we're going to for this moment specifically focus on the Warlock and equip the Reign of Fire Boots, which grant Radiant on Fusion Rifle or Linear, linear Fusion Rifle kills. The second to last thing is going to be specific to this season, and that's the artifact perk called Unraveling Orbs, which grants unraveling rounds when picking up an orb. Now we'll get to the mod section of the video in a second, but I think you guys know there's many ways to produce orbs. Now lastly, we're gonna equip the Arc subclass and we're gonna use the aspect Electrostatic Mind, which grants Amplified when picking up an Ionic Trace. Now combining all of this, you will proc Devour with Buried Bloodline, be can any tougher target in front of you, take them down with Repulsor Brace, be it Taipan or Commemoration, both which are craftable. This will extend Devour, Proc Radiant from your Reign of Fire boots, proc Void Overshield from Repulsor Brace, and during all of this, if you happen to kill a single target with any of your Arc 3.0 abilities, you'll proc Amplified. Now, I ran a solo coil with this build and it was very fun, strong, and versatile. But now I'm going to touch on what else you could do to combine this fun combination on other classes. Stasis Warlock, you say? It's up to you if you want to run Devour with Stasis Turrets, or keep up keep the Reign of Fire boots on, throw on Riptide, and synergize with Stasis Weapon Damage while proccing Radiant and Devour. Strand Warlock? Use Weaver's Call Aspect and build into your Threadlings to proc Unraveling Rounds, Devour, and Void Overshields all at once, or go for a Suspend build with Mind Spun Invocation. I'm going to skip Void in this video considering it's more obvious what to build into with Devour and I want it to stay outside the box on this video. So with that we're going to move over to the Hunter and uh, we're going to talk about some of my favorite builds with this combination. We're going to be using the Hunter Strand with Widow's Silk Aspect which grants two grenades. Now throw on the Moth Keeper's Wrath, Exotic Gauntlets, and you have three grenades. Shout out to Astacross's Build Battles video that inspired this one on the Hunter for me. With this combination, you now have three Moth Grenades that shield you or seek out targets, they'll proc Devour on kills, and you'll have a second way to proc Devour with Repulsor Brace, as well as having Unraveling Rounds in your top slot. Now, not to mention the Strand Super on the Hunter is one of the strongest in the game. So this build was so fun and almost unkillable in most activities. Another fun build is Renewal Grasps, running Resist times 3 inside of a Dusk Field Grenade. Use Touch of Winter to spawn a Stasis Crystal, which you can shatter, proccing Whisper of Shards. This will dramatically increase your grenade energy recharge rate on top of Devour granting you 15% of your grenade each kill. Throw on Repulsor Brace, the Scatter Signal, and you see where I'm going. Now the Scatter Signal is a fusion rifle that's craftable from this season. Arc Hunter mimics the Warlock build touched on earlier, but this time we're going to use Bombardiers, which is super fun to dance around blinding targets when you use your class ability. Throw on blinding grenades, and with Devour and the rest of your build, you're going to be a menace in the final shape. Another extremely strong recommendation would be Assassin's Cowl. Get that melee kill, go invis with Devour, nothing's going to kill you. 
For Solar, I personally went with Caliban's hand for those consistent ignition kills that procs devour, but if you wanted to build into the grenade aspect, try out Young Ahamkara Spine for trip mine grenades for days. I'm going to switch over to Solar Titan, but the aspects I'm going to touch on here for Solar can be used across all classes, Hunter and Warlock. So we're going to combine Ember of Torches to make us Radiant on melee hits, Ember of Hyperion to extend the duration of Radiant and Restoration with Solar Weapon kills, we're going to use Searing and Mercy so that kills on Scorched targets generate Fire Sprites, and those Fire Sprites grant Restoration. Now we're going to look at one of my favorite and slept on primaries in the game, and that's Fire Fright. Fire Fright intrinsically comes with the origin trait Extrovert, which states, kills while surrounded restore health, which is so clutch. Think of it as unrelenting, but we're going to look at running Osmosis on this weapon, which changes the weapon's damage type to the matching subclass after throwing a grenade. So now with this loop, we're going to proc Devour with the Bloodline, then use your grenade to proc Osmosis and spawn a Fire Sprite, use our melee to proc Radiant, and voila, you have Devour, Radiant, and Restoration with a way to extend all three. And if you really need, throw on Repulsor Brace in your heavy slot, and you now have one of the strongest solo builds in the game. For Strand Titan, I went with Abiant Leap and Shackle Grenade, alongside Dredgnar's Lash. This way we can proc Devour while keeping everything suspended for easy weakened kills to proc Overshield. And of course, use the Scatter Signal in the top slot for Unraveling Rounds. For Stasis, I used the Hoarfrost just to spam those Glacier Walls and Glacier Grenades everywhere. Throw on Tectonic Harvest and Whisper of Chains, and you now have Devour with Overshields everywhere. And last, but definitely not least, I went with Armamentarium on the Arc Titan for the good old Canadian Double Double Blinding Grenades. Two Blinding Grenades that detonate twice. If you wanted to use two Roaming Storm Grenades with Devour, that's very strong as well. And just plug in the aspects we talked about earlier, and you'll have a Double Double God Mode Titan. I hope you guys enjoyed this build video as I put a lot of thought into this one to make sure I covered everything without making it a 30 minute video. So if you guys made it this far, hit the like and sub, share this video out. You might just see it on the next episode of Build Battles. I've been Canadian Chronic, it's like sandwich time.